Our scripture today is from Matthew 9, 2 through 8. And just then, some people were carrying a paralyzed man lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. But some of the scribes had said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, perceiving their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go home. And he stood up and he went to his home. Then the crowd saw it. They were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's bow for prayer. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So in the bulletin today, there, there would have been uh, sermon notes, and uh, the, some of the scriptures we're going to highlight are there and handy for you. I hope that you'll keep this available, because I trust that God will lay something on your heart, and you'll have a place to, to jot it down to, to keep for later. All right, so I, I found something, and I don't know that this is real, but it, it, it is, it's scary if it's not, or maybe if it is. You guys can help me figure this out, okay? All right, so this notice appeared in a, in a big newspaper, and it starts, To those of you who bought our book, Skydiving Made Easy, please enter the following correction on page 12. Paragraph 3, line 2, the words state zip code should say pull rip cord. <laughs> we regret any inconvenience <laughs> this mistake may have caused you. Oh my goodness. Don't you feel like that sometimes when you embark on faith? And, and all of a sudden, you're doing something. It's like, what am I doing? And you think, I think I read the wrong thing on page 12, you know, and here I am in whatever it is. And, and, and you know somehow, this is, now this is how I feel. I know somehow, so I'm not speaking for anybody else, that God is somewhere chuckling at me. Maybe even sometimes laughing really loud at me because here I am in this thing that on my own I never would have gotten into but for some reason God felt like I needed to be there to bring whatever it is I bring and, and, and I hope that you guys have this experience too because what often happens is I am blessed beyond belief I mean, it's a good thing just to know that for this short space of time, I was in a place where God wanted me to be. Because sometimes, I don't know that I'm sure, I'm just, I'm doing what I think is the faithful thing, but there's not always the assurance that I hope for. But boy, when you get in that spot and you think, God must really be laughing at me right now. But then there's also the other thing, well, maybe I'm where God wants me to be right now. And that, to me, is so comforting. And so helpful, and, uh, and and I wish it would happen. I wish it would happen more. State zip code should say pull rip cord. So verse one, which for some reason we didn't include in our text today, just points out that Jesus crossed the sea and he came to his own town, and and that town is believed to be Capernaum. Capernaum was where was kind of the headquarters town of his Galilean ministry. Capernaum is like 106 miles north of Jerusalem, and it's from uh, Capernaum that Jesus made his, most of his pilgrimages to Jerusalem during his, his time for when he was, uh, would go there for Passover and other days. 
You know, again, in this uh, passage, and, and this passage occurs in other Gospels. We read this same or very similar story in Mark chapter 2. We read a similar account in Luke chapter 5. The difference in those accounts is in the Luke and in the Mark, there's a hole in a roof, and the, and the paralytic is, is lowered down to Jesus' presence. And I've always kind of liked that hole in the roof story myself. But for some reason, all of these encounters with Jesus are coming out of Matthew. And so we're going to stick with that. But, but, but what we find in, in verse 2, the first verse of our text, is Jesus saw their faith. Jesus saw their faith. And we're not sure whether it's the faith of the people that are bringing the paralytic, whether it's the faith of the paralytic, whether it's all of it included. But what I, I believe that we can draw from this is that our faith makes a difference in others' lives. When we're faithful, when we go to the places where we think God wants us to be, or when we find ourselves in a place that we can't believe God would put us there, but there we are, if our faithful response occurs, it is going to benefit other people. It's just going to. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, your, take heart, your son, your son, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. When we, we preached on love in Advent, and one of the things we pointed out about love is, is the initial step in love is to see. Is to see. And, and, and often in the Gospels, when you read Jesus right before he performs a miracle, you'll see Jesus saw, Jesus had compassion, and then Jesus heals the miracle. Sometimes you see it in the parables, the parables of, of like the, the Good Samaritan. The man saw, the man had compassion. The, the, the parable of the prodigal son, the father saw the son from a long way off. And then he responds with love. Jesus saw their faith. And then Jesus says, we are, your son, your sins are forgiven. You know, before we can love, we must see. And for some of us, if we intend to love the way that God wants us to love, we're going to have to kind of broaden maybe where we're looking. We're going to have to just remind ourselves in the back of our mind, Jesus died for everyone. Jesus died for everyone. So anytime we get it in our minds that we're going to exclude someone from the grace of God, let's, let's be careful. Let's be careful. So Jesus says the, the man's sins are forgiven, and immediately those who are there, they're claiming that Jesus has committed blasphemy. Blasphemy. And most scholars agree that to commit blasphemy, you have to somehow mention God's name in the blasphemy, and Jesus doesn't do that. But perhaps they've extended it to include if you do something that only God's supposed to be able to do. And, and, and you know, we're not sure about that, but, but, but then Jesus comes right back. It's like, well, what, what's going to be easier? Is it easier to forgive this man's sins, or is it easier to have him get up and walk? And both of them, to me, for me, seem pretty impossible. Because I'm not sure I can do either one. In fact, I know I can't forgive sins. Only God can do that. And when it comes to healing, most of the time we pray, but we don't see the miraculous healings that we read about in the New Testament. It's happened a couple of times in my ministry, but, but not as much. Which is easier. But here's the thing, I think for the, the folks who are complaining about Jesus, Jesus, it's easier for them to dispute the meaning of blasphemy than it is for them to help someone. Sometimes it's easier for us to go to a Bible study than it is for us to, to do something that God wants us to do. Maybe offer an invitation or or do something. It's easier to come here and sit in church than it is to go out and help feed people. 
And, and, and I think, I think we, we want to do Bible study so we know what we're supposed to do. We want to come to church because we want to be together. And there's great value in the, in, the, in the body of Christ coming together to worship God. But then also, all of that somehow feeds into what we do. Our helping people in need, our feeding people. And, and what we, we know, and, and, and I pull this from verse 4, is that Jesus knows our hearts. God knows our hearts. We read this in 1 Samuel 16, when he was there with Jesse and the sons, about to anoint David to be the second king of Israel. He's, uh, but the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance, on the height or the stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see, they look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. From Psalm 139, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wickedness and lead me in the way everlasting. From Proverbs 17, The crucible is for silver, the furnace is for gold, but the Lord tests the heart. God knows our heart. God knows our heart. There, there was a sense in, in uh, Bible times, maybe there's a sense today, that, 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 that some of the reasons that people get sick has to do with the sin in their lives. And, and, and maybe sometimes that's how it occurs, but a lot of times I think that our illnesses are, are more random than that. They have more to do with us just living in a, in a fallen world. Because all of us eventually... We're going to succumb and die of something if, if, if the Lord doesn't come back. And, and maybe, maybe through our eating or maybe through some behavior, we're, we're, we're helping something along. But sometimes it, things, it just happens. It just happens. But there, are, there, there is a linkage here in this passage between sinfulness and healing. And I don't know that it's a direct linkage. I don't know, but even if there is. But what, what you do see is that Jesus is demonstrating that he is God's son because Jesus not only forgives sins, Jesus heals. Jesus heals the paralytic. He saw with faith. He saw also the evil thoughts of the men around him as he addressed their issues. And he tells them, he says, and this is verse 6. He says, So that you know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, Stand up, take your bed, and go to your home. And, and one of the, the resources I looked at linked this, this whole passage back to the first chapter of Matthew, where we read about Jesus. Uh, well, this is 123. Look, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us, so that you know the Son of Man has authority. And then on the verse 21, two verses before in chapter 1, she will bear a son, you will name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. And we see all of this happening in this account. Jesus is identifying himself as the Son of Man, the Son of God, and he's also forgiving sins. I, I have mentioned in, in sermons past about my concern about the difficulty we seem to have in, in, in holding and maintaining meaningful relationships, deep relationships that stand the test of time. And it seems to me that one of the key ingredients for any relationship that's going to last a long time is the, our ability to forgive. Our ability to forgive. And when, when forgiveness is not a part of a relationship, usually what will occur is that relationship will end. Sometimes over something that's really serious, often relationships will end over things that are just fairly trivial. Because one or both of the parties struggle to be able to forgive. And there's such power 
in forgiveness. There's such power in forgiveness. I, I, I read this uh, back, I think I was in a college dorm, maybe in the commons at A&M, and I read this on a door, and, and it's, it's stuck with me. And it, it's, here it is. Value friends who make time for you on their calendar. Cherish friends who don't check their calendar. And oh, that we all could have two or three of those kinds of friends that that you call them and they're there. Oh, that we could be that friend for someone. That when they call us, we are there. So uh, Pastor Scott uh, Hosey lifted up in one of his sermons a report from the Templeton Foundation through the University of Michigan. And and, uh, they, they reported as they did this survey 75% of Americans are very confident they have been forgiven by God for past offenses. 75% confident they've been forgiven by God for past offenses. And and, and for these questions, these folks were, some of them went to church, some of them never went to church. But yet there was a confidence that God forgave for what they had done. But fewer admitted that they were able to forgive when it came to their relationships with other people. Only about half said that they were able to forgive when it came to other people because it's difficult. And it's even sometimes difficult to forgive ourselves when we know that we've fallen short. It's difficult to forgive others. It's difficult to forgive ourselves. But then the the study also found a link between the willingness to forgive and health. And health. And how people who are willing to forgive experience better health and they, they, they suffered less from, from stress related concerns. You see, when we sin against God, we need God's forgiveness. We can read in Titus chapter 3, we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, led astray, slaves to various passions and pleasures, passing our days in malice and envy, despicable, hating one another. If we've succumbed to any of that, we need God's forgiveness. And maybe we need the forgiveness of the folks that we have acted upon. You know, sometimes you think about this paralytic. He couldn't walk. He, he was only moving around because his friends were willing to help him. And I know sometimes we have friends, maybe people in our family, who, who get sick, and we hope and pray for their healing, and they get better. And, and sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes we don't get the miracle we're hoping for. And and there's lots of different ways I think that we can approach that. But what I hope that we will keep in our minds, whether the miracle we're hoping for happens or doesn't happen, is that God is with us. God is with us. No matter what occurs. And God will see us through. And it's difficult for us to know all the ins and outs of what God is up to. But at some point, we are all healed when we find ourselves in the presence of God. And that's possible because of Jesus Christ. Christ died, Christ arose, so that we could be made right with God and live in a relationship with God. Many of us, I think, find ourselves paralyzed in different ways. Maybe we're, we don't have a skill that we think we should have. Maybe, maybe we struggle with these relationships that I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe we're paralyzed when it comes to forgiving others. The way that we talk about, even when we pray the Lord's Prayer. Maybe, maybe it comes when we are not sure that God is really willing to forgive us. We've been talking about how 2024 is the year of invitation. And we're hoping that we can get to a place where each one of us is offering an invitation to God 
an invitation to join our church here. And however that goes, I hope all of us will be able to do that once a week. And we've been stressing the importance of weaving faith words into our conversations. We've talked about words like blessed, like wonder, like thanksgiving, like, uh, <clears throat> like joy. Joy. Talk about the joy that we have in our life. That joy often is different than happiness and that we can experience joy in good times and we can experience joy in bad times where usually happiness doesn't occur that, that way. Verse 8 of our text, When the crowd saw it, they were filled with awe, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to human beings. Our task is to love everyone. Love everyone. In Ephesians 4, we read, As a prisoner of the Lord, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. By, by be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope, but when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. I hope that we will turn our trust for God, that we will trust the Lord with our whole heart, that we will receive the forgiveness that God offers to us, and that we would then take the forgiveness that we receive and forgive others. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to trust in you Help us to receive the gift of Jesus Christ. May we call on Christ as our Lord and Savior. And Lord God, as we struggle to forgive, help us to see that that is exactly what you want us to do. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.